Good afternoon and welcome to your four to five. I'm Maddie Gardner here with Chad Silver in studio. Hi, and Hi. Eric Chilton at home. I'm just happy to be here. I'm again. happy you're here. I know, and, and in studio, it doesn't happen often. You're kind of here by yourself in right. studio. And now you got a partner today. I've been talking to television screens and monitors <laughs> for a couple of months now, so to see a human is nice. Right. Um, as you know, this is an interactive newscast. You can chat with us on our live streams, and of course, we chat back. The big story of the day, President Trump is making a campaign stop in Winston-Salem. It's the first of three North Carolina stops for Trump's campaign this week alone. Right, but this is the only city that the president himself will visit. WFMI News 2's Deheja Moise is in Winston-Salem, telling us what we know about the president's visit. Tehage Moyes outside Smith Reynolds Airport in Winston-Salem. Today marks President Trump's third visit to North Carolina in less than three weeks. Uh, this state is considered a battleground state in this year's election. Back in 2016, President Donald Trump narrowly won by less than three points. So this year he is hoping to still rally up his base as he comes out here tonight and gain some new supporters along the way. Now, many political experts calling North Carolina a battleground state. Now, we do have to talk about audience size because we are in the middle of a pandemic. Now, we are in phase 2.5 here in North Carolina, meaning only 25 people allowed inside, 50 people allowed outside. As you can see behind me, we clearly have more than that tonight. Now, uh, just ahead, you can see folks getting checked in. They do have to have a temperature check and masks are being given out to those who do not have them. Doors open here at four o'clock and already people starting to head in and claim their spot in line. Now, this crowd has been out here since very early this morning. My colleague telling me he saw at least 100 people here at 930 this morning. So people very dedicated to see President Trump as he visits Winston-Salem today. In the meantime, the Forsyth County Health Department says they are preparing for today's event like they would for any other. Mayor Allen Joyne says he would hope that the president would respect the mass gathering limit. Now, we will be out here all evening long. President Trump expected to speak at 7 o'clock tonight, and we'll bring that information to you as it comes. In Winston-Salem, Tahesha Moyes, back to you. Tasha, thank you. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden's campaign is holding a North Carolina event today as well. It is a virtual vote by mail rally. Stacey Abrams is the headline speaker. She'll be joined by North Carolina Senator Jeff Jackson and former Congresswoman Eva Clayton. You can join that virtual rally by RSVPing online. And several Democrats met today virtually to talk about the Trump administration and how it impacts North Carolina families. Former Governor Beth Perdue, Congresswoman Evelyn Terry and congressional candidate Kathy Manning focused on the number of coronavirus cases in our state. They condemned the president for holding a large campaign event this evening while cases continue to climb. Democratic candidate Kathy Manning mentioned the HEROES Act, which has been in limbo since the House voted to pass it. And Winston-Salem Representative Evelyn Terry says the city needs a president who can help small businesses that are struggling during the pandemic, as well as one committed to raising the minimum wage. The Greensboro Transit Authority is doing its part to help voters move to the polls. Project is providing transportation to voting precincts on Election Day. The project is also providing a downloadable voter guide with dates and resources. You can also find this information under the Election Station tab on RideGTA.com. The Confederate Monument in Graham is staying put for now. The Alamance County Board of Commissioners made that decision this morning. The county attorney says the statue cannot be moved because it sits on county property. County leaders say state law prevents them from permanently moving the statue. They also say a 2015 law would need to be changed to move it. Protesters gathered near the county courthouse to protest the board meeting. Police arrested four people during that protest. Well, staying in Alamance County, now the courthouse reopened today. You may remember that it was temporarily closed after a coronavirus outbreak there. Now, if you have to go to the courthouse, you'll have to answer a health questionnaire, have your temperature taken, and you'll need to wear a mask as well. The county says inmates will not go through the courthouse buildings for now. That detention center, by the way, has 120 confirmed cases.
Well, the tape has come off and playgrounds are back open in Greensboro under the governor's phase 2.5 reopening plan they were able to open on Friday. Now, city staffers say they needed time to prepare, so they reopened today. WFMY News 2's I. Denise McMiller shows us what's different. There are signs posted everywhere at parks all over the city, like this one reminding folks of capacity limits. Greensboro Parks officially reopened today. And families wasted no time swinging into phase 2.5's ease restrictions, allowing playgrounds to open. It feels great to be out here on the playground. I um, feel like we've been cooped in the house for a year now. And uh, it's just nice to have other options to, to bring your kids and where they can get out and get out of the house and enjoy some fresh air. Chris Curry spent some quality time with his daughter, Kendall, on the swings at Country Park. He says he feels safe. I mean, everyone is kind of social distancing, except some of the kids, but. But for the most part, um, everybody's kind of, you know, respecting each other's space and boundaries, and, um, and that's a great thing. It was quite the turnout at Country Park with kids on the swings, slides, and other play equipment. Not many wore masks, but most social distanced themselves and stayed with their family groups. Parks and Recreation has posters reminding folks to social distance, wear masks, and wash their hands. There's also signs reminding folks of gathering limits. That's no more than 50 people outdoors. Basketball courts are closed until this weekend. And the Greensboro Cultural Center reopened today. Galleries are closed, but those who use the space will slowly get back into the building. Well, Guilford County students started live remote learning today. This is the fourth week of school for those students, but for the past three weeks, teachers have taped lessons to ease the kids into learning online. But new live lessons, they're going to happen starting today. They last one to three hours, and then the rest of the day will be filled with those recorded lessons and other work. Parents and students can check Canvas for their schedules. There's one week left to register your child for free tutoring through Say Yes Guilford. About 230 students have already registered for that free tutoring. The group is using three programs for tutoring sessions to meet student needs. Parents can register students for up to two hours of one-on-one -on -one lessons per week. Sessions started today, but you have until next Tuesday to register your student. You can find the link on our website. Our forecast has been comfortable from a temperature standpoint, but you can feel that humidity start to return. We talked about that yesterday, didn't we? And here it is uh, building in ahead of uh, the next system. It's really just a bunch of mess. We have a stationary front off the coast and then a low pressure system and all that's going to converge inland. It'll be unusual. Our showers will actually move from east to west over the next couple of days. So right now, low 80s for Winston-Salem, Greensboro and High Point all at 81, Burlington at 84, Mount Airy at 81, Walnut Cove 82. We'll drop down to 69 tonight. Look for mostly cloudy skies. Could see a stray storm here or there. Tomorrow, a cooler high of only 79. We'll see more clouds and more rain. And if you look at the bottom right corner of the radar, let's go ahead and go out to a wide shot. Yeah, that's where most of the rain is hovering at the coastal sections. And again, all that will start to push inland over the next few days. And we'll see rain chances going up the 50, 60 percentage, maybe even higher um, and a possibility of several inches of rain. We'll talk more about that coming up with a long range forecast in just a minute. All right, let's get to your four to five roundup. First, House Democrats announced an investigation into whether Postmaster General Louis DeJoy suggested employees at his business, New Breed Logistics in High Point, contribute to Republican candidates in exchange for bonuses. Five people are accusing DeJoy of urging them to write checks or go to fundraisers at his home in Greensboro. DeJoy testified last month to a House committee for recent changes to Postal Service operations. President Trump says DeJoy should be investigated and lose his job if he's found guilty of the accusations. It's not illegal to encourage employees to contribute to candidates, but it is to reimburse them for those contributions. A military helicopter was unsuccessful in trying to rescue dozens of people last night, sheltering in place from the Creek Fire in California. Heavy smoke conditions prevented a safe approach, but they say they'll try again. Power companies shut off the juice to more than 172,000 homes in an effort to prevent sparks from power lines that could create even more fires. Two of the three largest fires in state history are currently burning in the San Francisco area. California has seen 900 fires since mid-August. Eight people have died in those fires that have burned more than 3,000 homes. Publix collected more than 11 million pounds of produce and 500,000 gallons of milk to donate to food banks. 
Since April, the grocery chain purchased excess products from local farmers impacted by the pandemic. Publix has donated more than $5 million to Feeding America food banks. The Proximity Hotel and Printworks Bistro reopened today. Owners celebrated by lighting up the hotel with the word open in its windows. If you book a room during the reopening deal, you'll get a $150 credit to spend at Printworks. 4 to 5, we're coming back right after this. More than 65 million people in the United States take care of a sick, disabled or aging family member. Those numbers coming from the National Alliance of Caregiving. On average, they spend more than 20 hours a week being a caregiver. And even though most adult children are happy to help their parents, few of them are truly prepared for the task at hand. That's why Senior Resources of Guilford County is bringing a new resource to the area, adult children of aging parents. Ashlyn Martin, the assistant director, explains. There's a huge need to support the caregivers um, because as a caregiver, it's a 24 seven job. It's not a job that you can just do whenever you wanna do. It's not a job that stops on the weekends or stops on the holidays. When you're caring for someone, you're caring for them all day, every day. That group will meet every month starting virtually on September 17th, and they're going to touch on topics like resources available in the community, Medicare, legal and financial services, and stress management. Bruce McReynolds, the chapter coordinator, says connecting people with the help they need is key. I hear so often from adult um, children, you know, we don't know what we don't know, and we're not familiar with the resources that are available in the community. And so I think that will be probably one of the 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 big impacts that um, ACAP will have um, is helping folks understand what is available in the community and help answer some of the questions that they don't know yet. ACAP is aimed at anyone who has to take care of a loved one, not just those people who consider themselves caregivers. And while it's based in Guilford County, anyone, no matter where they are, can join the virtual sessions. Alexis Williams, a caregiver herself and the executive director of Caregiver Connect, says there are a number of benefits to joining. When they are in the presence of others who are like themselves, they often feel better and are often better at taking care of um, things about 
uh, their own uh, well-being. So here's that information again. ACAP's first meeting is next Thursday. That's September 17th. It is virtual. You can register right now through email or with a phone call. And all of that information will be on our website for you. The 4 to 5 is coming right back. There are so many talented artists out there, whether they're sculptors or painters or they like to draw or, or photography. And a lot of them get lost in the shuffle, even right here in the triad, especially think about it with the pandemic shutting everything down. Museums are closed, no place to really show off their wares. So one program is sort of making a dent in that and changing it all. I spoke with a winner of the Art Pop Street Gallery competition in Winston-Salem to get the story. Here's part of my conversation with photographer Jessica Teff. Jessica, this is so cool. I, I love this idea of a competition. For people that aren't familiar with this, can you explain what this is all about, what the Art Pop series is? Uh, Art Pop Street Gallery is a competition for local artists. I think it's all over North Carolina, and it gives them a chance to have their work shown on billboards. You apply, it's a competition, and if your work is selected, in my case, um, they show it on billboards all around Greensboro and Winston-Salem. It's a really wonderful way to promote local art. It's a great opportunity for them. I, like, for instance, you called and saw my work. It's been wonderful. I've had friends calling. I've never had my work shown this big. I never thought I would have a chance to see it this big. I, I didn't think about this, that you, to, to see your work on that scale, because these are on massive billboards along the highways, I'm assuming, and to see your photography there, what was that like the first time you saw that? It was an absolutely amazing it was also especially wonderful during this time where everything is shut down. It's a wonderful way to have a public art gallery. And also the piece itself is um, very poignant to me because it's a piece about resilience and keeping going. And it's a hopeful piece. And so I thought it was really wonderful that it was selected during this time. With this competition, what do you think, what's the end result with this? Um, what, they finish the competition, the six winners are out there and up on the billboards. What do you want to come of all this? For me, it's just very happy for me to see that the art and have other people enjoy it. 
I really like art to be interactive and I think that it being by the road creates an interaction with drivers and if someone just is happy or has a response to my art because they drove by it, that's enough for me. Spoken like a true artist. Thank you for taking time out today. This is great. Keep up your good work. You're doing great stuff out there. And you can take a look at all the winners. They're incredible there. We've linked you to that website through ours. Go to WFMYNews2.com and look for this story. The 4 to 5. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your four to five with Labor Day behind us. The unofficial start to fall. I was curious to see when the season really began for you. Some consider Labor Day the beginning. Others stick to the official first day of fall and this year that's September 22nd. For our weather folks, meteorological fall is September 1st, but for some it's not a date on the calendar, but a feeling. You know what I'm talking about. Crisp air, a pumpkin coffee, a football game. So I ask you on my Facebook page, when does the season start for you? Let's take a look at what you had to say. Jerry McFadden said, for me, it's when we get the first hint of cooler air, but I refuse to call it fall until after the 21st because I don't want to see winter roll in. Mary McNeely Gann said, when the evenings are cooler, it's a good time to sit by the fire and enjoy the evening. Barbara Rumley McGatlin said right after Labor Day, so she is in fall now. Sarah Castor says fall starts for me September 1st. That way there's all of September, October, and November for fall. I bet she loves this season. Charles Ellis said when them leaves start changing or we are constantly in the upper 50s in the mornings, that's when fall starts for me. Christina Cromwell said fall starts when the temperatures start going down a bit and the leaves change colors normally when college football and tailgating starts, but that's looking different this year. Janet Beasley said hang on to summer. September 22nd is fall and Eric you'll appreciate this one. Joe and Debbie Hallett said there will be no fall season this year because the autumn leaves festival has been canceled. Uh, yeah, that one hurt in Mount Airy. It's one of my favorite events in the entire world. It just so happens to be mine and Eric's hometown. We're missing it this year. It'll be back next year, right? Add it to the list, mm. right? I'd 
That's right. No, I, for me, it's um, and you're right. Meteorologically, it's September, October, November. But um, for me personally, October, the beginning of October is kind of it because by then, usually, from a statistic standpoint, we're usually seeing cooler temperatures. That that makes it feel like fall and football. I think for me it's football, absolutely. And it's the tailgate and all the things that we can't do this year. Um, but that's when I f really start to think like, hey, we're getting back into the <laughs> fall season. I enjoy fall, don't get me wrong, but I'm always very apprehensive about enjoying it because I know what comes after it. Oh, not a fan of winter. Not at all. I don't feel like we had a summer this year, so I just went ahead and started fall today. My friend baked pumpkin <laughs> muffins and I had one this afternoon with my afternoon cup of coffee. So I'm there. Maybe I'll light my fall candle this week. I'm ready. You should. I don't decorate. Just, just for go fall. ahead and do it. But I don't Get really decorate mood, for anything. <laughs> Not even Christmas? Well, I, I put a stocking up. How about that? Chad, I'll help you Chad. out. Maybe, can you help me? Just come over and you can be my interior <laughs> Your <designer> elf? decorator. <laughs> Your my elf on a shelf. Elf. Yeah. Right. Hey, they do come back every <laughs> December, right? Um, but honestly, Eric, the past few mornings when I've gotten out and about, it has felt cooler, like fall temperatures. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of sneaking back in a little bit. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes this time of the year, especially once we get into fall, we'll get those extended periods of rain, which nobody likes, but two or three days in a row that there's a possibility that we could see that happen over the next two or three days. I know if you've lived in North Carolina in length of time, you know some of those fall stretches of rain get a little monotonous. So let's look at the radar and you can see a lot of this rain is in its the reverse of normal. This is actually pushing inland from the coast that we're seeing. So that will, we could see a couple of those showers hours tonight as a matter of fact but watch that stationary front and then the low pressure center off the coast as that just kind of merges over our area it makes it very muggy it makes uh, scattered showers and heavy at times a possibility I think for our Wednesday Thursday maybe even into Friday we're watching some of these rain chances start to slip back up again so look at the seven day because we go to a 60 percent chance of rain tomorrow a 50-50 shot, which is still elevated for us for Thursday, Friday, maybe into Saturday. But the highs for the next two days are upper 70s. Then we're back to the low 80s through your weekend. There's a chance, folks, if you live in flood-prone areas, be careful over the next two or three days. We could see anywhere from one to three inches of rain. We'll be back. Definitely breaking the mass gathering mandate. Keep, yeah, keep going. All right, so we are here, and as I look around the crowd, most people are not wearing a mask. So there's that. Hello, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go.
Welcome to your four to five. We have a full house today. I'm Chad Silver here with Maddie Gardner, Eric Chilton and Tahitia Moyes, who is live in Winston Salem, where President Trump is making a campaign stop tonight, right? We will get to Tahitia in a moment, but remember this is an interactive show. We like to chat with you on our live streams. So you can find us on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Just use our hashtag four to five. All right, let's jump right in. President Donald Trump will soon arrive in Winston Salem. It is the first time he has publicly visited the, visited the triad since he was elected in 2016. Now his campaign will focus on our state this week with two more stops by his sons Eric and Donald Jr. Deja Moyes live at the rally right now. Deja, I see you're inside of the gate through security. What do you see there? Yes, I am inside the gate open here at four o'clock for people in attendance. There is a lot of people here. You can see behind me the stands are full down on the ground and behind the stage where President Trump will be speaking. Now, everyone who entered into this area uh, was required to get a temperature screening. I saw masks being handed out as they walked through. But as I look around the crowd now, a majority of people as they sit at their seats are not wearing masks. Now, I, I mentioned that because, yes, we are in the middle middle of a pandemic and we are in phase 2.5 here in North Carolina, meaning Governor Cooper still has that limit on mass restrictions, 20 inside, 50 outside. Clearly that is not happening here, but the president is traveling to the triad because he realizes how important North Carolina is. We are a battleground state back in 2016. He won narrowly over Hillary Clinton by less than 3%. So with tonight's speech, he's hoping up to rally up his base here, gain some support supporters for those maybe who are undecided here in the next few weeks. We're just eight weeks away from Election Day. President Donald Trump expected to speak here at seven o'clock, so we will continue to monitor conditions here in Winston-Salem and bring you the latest as they become available. In Winston-Salem, Tahesha Moyes, back to you. All right, Tahesha, thank you. WFMY News 2 will continue our live coverage of President Donald Trump's campaign stop. More coming up at 5, 6 and tonight at 11. OK, I know this is going to sound strange, but Facebook wants you to wants to pay you to deactivate your Instagram and Facebook accounts before the November election. The social media giant wants to understand the role social media plays in politics. In a statement, Facebook says it needs to better understand whether social media makes us more polarized as a society or if it largely reflects the divisions that already exist. Facebook says it also wants to know if it helps people to become better informed about politics or less, or if it affects people's attitudes toward government and democracy. So this is interesting. LabCorp is releasing a test they say designed for both coronavirus and the flu altogether. They say the test can identify multiple types of infections. This would help doctors and uh, patients determine the best treatments for them. This test is currently available through any physician or hospital. LabCorp is applying for an uh, FDA approval that would give them an at-home version of the test as well. The State Department of Health is now developing an app to let you know if you have been exposed to the coronavirus. The app called Slow COVID NC will use both Google and Apple notification systems to alert someone if they come in contact with the person who tested positive for the virus. They say the app is anonymous and will not collect or share any of your personal information or data. It works like this. If someone tests positive for the virus, a unique pin will be created for that person and anyone who crosses paths with that person will be identified of exposure. You can download the free app on a voluntary basis later this month. Let's get to your four to five roundup this afternoon. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the Senate will vote on a Republican coronavirus relief package. McConnell says the package focuses on health care, education and the economy. It would provide more than $100 billion to help reopen schools. It also offers $300 in federal unemployment benefits each week. This bill, however, does not contain a second round of stimulus checks. The number of cases of coronavirus in India has doubled from 2 million to more than 4 million in just one month. The government reported more than 90,000 new cases on Monday alone. Now, during the first week of August, India was only reporting around 55,000 new cases each day. This new daily spike is now the highest in the world. Some experts say the actual number of infections may be past the United States number of cases. 
Experts say testing is not happening very often in India and that could be impacting the actual number of cases. India currently has the third highest death rate from coronavirus. Well, watch where you are walking when you go outside. The North Carolina Department of Agriculture is now issuing a warning about baby copperheads. The snake slays seven to eight eggs toward the end of summer. Copperheads are a lighter tan color with pinkish brown hourglass patterns. They can be aggressive, but they say they'll typically leave you alone as long as you don't bother them. Just what I needed to hear. That means I'm not going outside for a while. All right, let's talk about tropical weather, shall we? Because we have a couple of systems. They bear watching, but they're out in the middle of nowhere for right now. But generally speaking, they're moving back to the west, closer to the United States. So we'll keep an eye on it. Tropical Storm Paulette, a strong one at 65 miles per hour. By definition, you have to get up to about 74 to be a Category 1 hurricane. So she's close to that. If you look at the forward track of this one, uh, holding as a tropical storm for the majority of the track there, you see it taking all the way to Sunday. And if you look on the left side of the box there the, of the graphic, you can see the United States there. So generally speaking, that's one that we will watch, although we're a good distance away from her being able to affect the United States. Renee is out there as well. So if you look at that storm, it could be a category one by Thursday, but then the models show it turning around, heading back to the North Atlantic where the waters are traditionally cooler and that takes it back down to uh, tropical storm strength. For us, 69 degrees for the overnight low tonight with mostly cloudy skies. You might see a stray storm. I haven't seen much yet, but the rain moves in from the coast. Actually, it pushes inland. We've got a 50 to 60% chance of showers for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And during that period, we might get one to three inches of rain. Maybe take that through Saturday as well. But the highs only upper 70s for tomorrow and Thursday. That'll feel fall like. Low 80s, that's where we stay through your weekend. Sunday, though, once we get to Sunday, it's kind of back to normal with a slight late day pop up shower or storm. Same story on Monday and Tuesday with more sunshine on those two days. All right, we want you to play along too. When you think of the word holiday, what comes to mind, friends? Christmas. Yeah, Christmas, absolutely. Okay, do you think most holidays cost you money? A whole lot of it. <laughs> Christmas <laughs> definitely does. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. if you haven't heard, President Trump signed a payroll tax holiday of sorts. Payroll tax holiday or payroll tax deferral all means the same thing. From now until the end of the year, you're going to take a holiday from paying Social Security taxes. As of right now, the employer has not been mandated to participate in this program. Uh, however, if they do choose to implement this program, all qualifying employees must participate. So one topic of conversation has been on the concern that the employee would not have an option to opt out. Well, if your employer hasn't said whether they will take part in this payroll tax deferral, you need to ask them. And don't miss this part. The holiday, it's not free. Like most holidays, this is going to cost you. You don't pay the taxes now, but you will pay them later. How does it work out and what does this mean for Social Security? We're going to dig deeper at 6 p.m. Coming up at 5.30, though, Cone Health experts take a look at what you need to know about coronavirus and flu season. You get to ask them questions. That's right, your questions, they're taking them 336-379. 5775. I know you've got the urge to call the number, but don't do that. This is texting questions only. Ask, you may, sh you, wait, you shall ask, you receive. Wait, what's the quote? What? You ask, you shall receive. Mic check. One, two, three, ask, four. Um, there you go. Okay.
Welcome back to your four to five at long last. We are getting a better look at what the high school sports season will offer in 2020. The North Carolina High School Athletic Association released some new guidelines for team workouts and plans for the postseason in all fall sports. So we have to bring in WFMY News 2's Luke Lidden. He's live with more on the announcement. Hey, Luke. Yeah, Maddie, up to this point in time, the entire high school sports season had really just been basically a big question mark. But now players, fans, coaches, staff, they all have a better idea, a clearer picture of when the sports season will start and finish by season's end, most noticeably football, which is set to begin in February. Now the new details expanded on the modified schedule and they include the state playoffs. For most sports, a total of 32 teams will qualify for the state playoffs, which is about a 50% reduction from normal while football brackets will be reduced to two 16-team brackets in each classification. And for more clarification, the play of football brackets will be released on April 10th with the state championship coming your way on May 8th. Kind of weird to think about, right? We're not used to those dates uh, whatsoever. But keep in mind, this really is just the tip of the iceberg as there are many more details for many more uh, high school teams and sports and what they should expect for the upcoming season. Another important one to remember, since we have moved into phase 2.5 of the reopening of the state, this also means that team workouts can be expanded up to 50 people outdoors and a maximum of 25 people indoors. We will have much more information coming up uh, later tonight here on WFMI News 2 at 5 o'clock and of course online at WFMI News 2.com. Luke, thanks. Also new this afternoon, the ACC says it'll move forward with fall sports. The conference says it met with student athletes and most say they want to play. If a student athlete chooses to sit out of the season, they will not lose any scholarship money or a season of eligibility. The ACC says it plans to keep a close eye on the changing landscape of the virus and prepared to adjust schedules and games as needed. We'll be right back. Hi there, one, two, three, four, five, six.
right, kind of gross, but have you ever thought about how when someone blows out the candles on a birthday cake, their germs get on the cake? I've thought about it often, even before the pandemic, but a Florida dentist is helping put an end to that problem by creating a cake shield. Yes, take a look at this. Kind of strange. The top and cake shields, they have holes cut out for candles, so you can still have candles on your birthday cake and blow them out, but not spit all over the cake. They protect your cake from all of your germs. The products start at $4.99. They come in all different sizes. You can see you can get one for a slice or a full cake, whatever you want. They're going on sale on September 15th. I mean, okay. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Call me old school, but I, I really don't like that. I, I am fine if there's a little bit of dribble on top of the oh. cake. <laughs> Because it's a birthday cake, that's what you do. A little bit of dribble, Eric. Just a little, Just bit, a little bit. Hey, coming from a father of four, if you've ever seen a kid blow out birthday oh. candles, I can go for the cake shield. Um, now, when it's my own kids, you don't care as much, right? But if you're at another party and the kid's going, <laughs> blowing the candles out, yep, I could go for the cake shield. You know, it's funny, too. Um, so I never thought about this until until the pandemic. And then I saw a, a really funny meme that, you know, it had a cake on it mm -hmm. and said, do you remember when we used to blow on cakes? <laughs> and so then bizarre. <laughs> um, I would like a cake shield for every cake here, here on out. Like, give me all the cake shields. I don't want spit on the cake. I'm sorry. I can I can live with that. That doesn't bother me because I it, actually I think now with the pandemic nobody would think twice about it. Nobody would think like, oh, you're so strange for buying this little shit. No, they'd probably be like, oh, I'll eat this cake. I won't eat the next one. You know? Could you imagine if this would have you know come out in 2019? People would have scoffed, like you said, Eric. Right. No, right. Like, what do you? What's wrong with you? What is the problem? This is something <laughs> I would have done in 2019. You know, just add it to the list of reasons. Yes. That I'm Chad, here. I guess. Chad. I will tell Chad, I did a story recently. I don't know, you might not have seen it because you're working on other shows, but I did a story <laughs> recently about top 10 things that um, that you would say now that a year ago mm. would sound ridiculous. And my favorite one was, of course I'm wearing a mask to go to the bank. You wouldn't have said that <laughs> in right. 2019. Right. 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 You wouldn't have been allowed to go into <laughs> no, the bank with like, a mask um, on, sir. I'm sure. Right, right. <laughs> exactly see your right. hands. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's Let's talk about something that I love. This is a Southern staple that I'm about to talk about. Sometimes you might see a spin on one of your favorite foods or beverages that you might not have thought of. And you see a lot of that on social media. So that's exactly where I found out about this recipe that takes a Southern staple to a different level. Just think red and fizzy. Take a look. So every good North Carolinian knows about the goodness that lies right there, right? Cheer wine. But I've been doing some research. I've found that cheer wine is used for a lot of different things. For example, take a look. Apparently, I never knew this. There were cheer wine popsicles at one point at Food Lion. There is a cheer wine cocktail. There's multiple of those you can find online. But lately, it's the cheer wine slushy I've been hearing about. Apparently, the barn, which is an antique store in Thomasville, they sell these slushies and even the Greensboro Elks Lodge, who knew? So I looked online, and I'm gonna show you how to make a slushie at home. Here we go. Last step, just pour and serve. There you go. The cheer wine slushy. Enjoy, my friend. There you go. And now I know you're going to try this at home because I did. And actually, I'll be honest with you. It's awesome. You're supposed to garnish it with a lime. I didn't have a lime. So try that. Um, so I asked you on Facebook. I said, what, what's your favorite frozen treat? And a lot of you chimed in here. We'll start out with Teresa, who just went simple, right? She just said the old root beer float. Can't beat that. Uh, Becky says, besides a frozen margarita, I make my own with raspberry sherbet and diet ginger ale. It's not bad. Teresa says, maybe a frozen margarita. Are you seeing a line here, a common theme? Uh, Heather says, Andy's frozen custard. Okay. Sue says, just simple real milkshakes. 
And then Candy says, does a pina colada count? Absolutely. I will tell you guys that online, we must have had uh, 70% of people said frozen margarita. I'm not kidding. It is 2020. Some people uh, need some alcoholic medication. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the pandemic, yes. <laughs> um, so if I had to choose, um, it, it, it would all determine um, you know, if I'm trying to eat healthy or not. If I'm not trying to eat healthy, a blueberry watermelon milkshake from Cookout. And if I'm trying to eat healthy, it's uh, just frozen grapes. I love frozen grapes. Ah, I am trying to wrap my head around a blueberry watermelon, watermelon milkshake. milkshake. I need to think about that a little bit longer. I love frozen yogurt. There's this place in Chapel Hill. It's called the Yogurt Pump. It's on Franklin Street. I was a regular. Have you been there? That, I've been there. Love that. I forgot about that. I'm changing my answer then. I'm going with you. I forgot all about that. I don't know if it's the actual frozen yogurt or that it's just in Chapel Hill, but I love it. <laughs> there might be some of that. A little bit of both. It adds a, it adds a special flavor, Chad, in case you didn't know that, too. All goodness. Um, here's what's going on here with the forecast. Um, you know, we've, we're looking at temperatures that aren't bad. I mean, nobody complains when we're saying oh, we're 81 degrees. That's pretty comfortable. 84 in Burlington, by the way, always warmer there. To the south, 79 in Lexington, Ashboro at 81. Tonight, we're dropping down to the upper 60s. And uh, Maddie mentioned this earlier. It is true. It almost feels a little fall-like, right? When you step out in the mornings and you're seeing 60s out there, it's kind of crisp. We will see higher humidity, though, so not that dry fall weather. The humidity will push up probably for the next three days in a row, at least, as we see a couple of systems kind of converge over our area that will bring extra rain chances. So tomorrow, the high only makes it to 77 with all that cloud cover and rain and it's a good probably 50 to 60 percent chance of scattered showers at any time during the day not our normal late day variety when you look at the radar most of this rain is coming from it's the exact opposite right most of our weather comes from the west or the southwest this is from the east and all that rain pushes in across our state over the next couple of days you see um, two systems here there's a stationary front lingering at the coast and a low pressure system then another stationary front that approaches from the west and all that just gives us a lot of moisture and good rain chances a really good amount of rain that could move in over the next couple of days there's a chance that we could see anywhere from one to three inches of rain total Total before everything finally clears out, which by the way, will take several days to happen. Uh, in case you missed it earlier, Tropical Storm Paulette it winds at 65. This one is in the middle of the Atlantic, but when you look at the general path of this, even though it remains at tropical storm strength, by Sunday, you know, it is generally heading toward the East Coast. So we'll watch that. A front could come off and turn that one very quickly. And then Renee is also out uh, in the middle of the ocean. Basically, we expect that one to make a turn more to the north and not a threat to the East Coast. Um, looking at the forecast in the short term, tonight the clouds build in. You may see a little rain, but not as likely as tomorrow. 69 is the overnight low tonight. Tomorrow's high only. 77. Here's your extended forecast low or excuse me upper 70s for Wednesday Thursday with a good chance of rain at any time that extends into Friday and Saturday actually 82 and 81 Friday Saturday we stay around that neck of the woods for Sunday Monday Tuesday the difference we're back to normal with just a pop-up late day shower for Monday and Tuesday overnight lows primarily in the 60s and it looks like the coolest overnight low will be Friday night into Saturday morning with a reading of 67. Coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5 o'clock, Winston-Salem is in the spotlight. President Donald Trump is making a campaign stop in Winston-Salem. In just a couple of hours from now, we will have live coverage of his visit to the triad next on WFMY News 2 at 5.